Mati Gill is Senior Director of Public Policy at Teva, the largest generic drug manufacturer in the world. In his role, Mati regularly engages policymakers in the United States, Israel, and around the world, including Europe, a major manufacturing site and market uh, for Teva's uh, pharmaceutical products. Uh, Mati is deeply involved as well in Israel's uh, innovative ecosystem and certainly in the biomed uh, sphere. I met Mati roughly 10 years ago when he was chief of staff to the Minister of Public Security, Avi Dichter, and we both planned his first trip to Washington together. So it's a great honor uh, to introduce you, Mati, and to hear uh, about uh, Teva's important role uh, in, in this age. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. And at least, uh, I at least had a lot more hair um, 10 years ago when we first met uh, back in Washington, DC. Um, I do believe that you're in a much better place but on that, on that sphere. But I do want to thank you and the whole LNET team for inviting me to brief the group. And in general, I would say to thank you all for the work that you do. Um, uh, there's really a critical role that LNET plays for the US, uh, for the Israel European relationships, which I believe are at a place right now, which are stronger than ever. And the relationship between the European Union and European countries and Israel um, is really critical for companies like ours that uh, conduct commerce in a global uh, environment and arena to be able to make sure that we can export and import our goods from Israel to Europe and from Europe to Israel and around the world. And like you mentioned, David, uh, Teva is a major investor in Europe, both in research and development, manufacturing, as well as a, a regional headquarters that we have both in uh, Holland, in the Netherlands, as well as in the, the UK. So we are heavily invested. It's actually the geography, the regional geography, where we have the most employees, uh, I believe around 17,000, more or less, uh, throughout Europe. And we create many more jobs in that. So I really want to thank Elnet. And I've had the uh, unique uh, honor of being able to host several of your groups while they're in Israel. And uh, thank you uh, for all the work that you do and for all the supporters, um, because it really makes a difference. Um, so just to lay the groundwork of what we'll deal with, and I, I will welcome any questions at the end, uh, what I plan to share with you all today is basically uh, three things. One is a little bit of facts about Teva's history and what, and what our impact and footprint is now globally, uh, both in the US, European Union, countries, EU, uh, UK, of course, as well, and, other, uh, and in Israel, and our impact here in Israel. Secondly, what we're doing regarding COVID-19. And third is just to share a little bit about what's going on with regards to COVID-19 developments uh, globally and in, and in uh, Israel as well, uh, beyond Teva, and, and um, of course, to answer any questions that you might have. So hopefully you can all see, but we did not, contrary to popular popular opinion, entrepreneurship and innovation did not start in the 21st century. Um, so these are three entrepreneurs that actually started uh, and founded Teva over 120 years ago, right outside the old city of Jerusalem, right outside the old, the, the old city gate of the Jaffa Gate in Jerusalem. And what an entrepreneur, what we all know an entrepreneur does, just like today, we are all looking for the unmet need of a vaccine for COVID-19 entrepreneurs tried to provide a solution to an unmet need. So 120 years ago, as the population was growing in the land of Israel and people needed medicines, three entrepreneurs here, Solomon Levin and Elstein, founded the first pharmacy that then grew into a pharmacy chain that nowadays, as David mentioned, is the leading provider of medicines throughout the world, full stop. And our role nowadays is to be, and our mission is to be a global leader in generic medicines, but also a leader in biopharma, biopharmaceutical innovation in specific therapeutic areas that we as Teva choose to uh, pursue in. And I'll share with you a little bit, but we are leaders in CNS and neuroscience and uh, a little bit in oncology as well, as well as in respiratory diseases and other diseases. And our mission is really to improve the lives of patients. And as I mentioned before, being the leading medicines provider is probably no 
at no time more important than it is right now in the current COVID-19 crisis. Uh, in the European, in, in throughout Europe, including the UK, I'm sorry, I'm just uh, trying to get used to uh, EU, European Union, and UK with the post-Brexit reality. But um, it, throughout Europe, uh, Teva is the leading medicines provider. We have been for around the last decade since we acquired a company called Ratio Farm in Germany, where we have a regional manufacturing site as well with global capabilities that exports throughout the world. And we are the leading provider of medicines, and we also are the backbone of healthcare systems throughout Europe and elsewhere throughout the world, as I'll share with you in a second, where we, prov where we drive savings to, to medicines, uh, to savings to healthcare systems by pro providing high quality, accessible, sustainable medicine supply of our generic medicines throughout the world. So as you can see here, we can save the German healthcare system over $2 billion. And accumulatively, through, through independent research that we've conducted, Teva alone, just one company based out of Israel, uh, sa saves European healthcare systems over $8.5 billion every single year. So really, we have a critical role to play in making sure healthcare is accessible to patients all throughout Europe, and as you'll see in a second, not just in Europe. But our impact in Europe is not just regarding our supply of medicines and savings that we drive. It's also regarding the way that we uh, are a major investor throughout countries all throughout Europe. Uh, so we have manufacturing sites in most of these countries that you see in front of them. We have R&D sites in most of these countries around. These are the amount of jobs we create and support over our 110,000 jobs all throughout the Europe, all throughout Europe. Um, and in each one of the major uh, countries that we are invested in, uh, we are also a, a, a significant investor in, uh, in, Europe, in manufacturing, in R&D, and also in supply chain of our medicines to be able to provide them for patients throughout these countries. And in all of these countries, we are not just manufacturing for local purposes, we are doing that for the local population, but also in a global supply chain, each one of our factories then support the supply of medicines to the US in Asia and Israel and elsewhere, as, as well as our impact in Israel where we also manufacture here for Europe. In, in the United States where some of you are located, we save the US healthcare system around $42 billion in savings every single year. We know about half of that goes to government paid programs. Around $6 billion of our savings in the United States go directly to the, patient, to, to the pockets of patients. This is all based on independent studies. One out of seven medicines and prescriptions provided in the United States is a type of medicine. It's the same in, in Europe, the same roughly in Europe, where in the UK it's one out of six, and in Germany it might be a similar ratio. This is the meaning of being a leading medicines provider. And we know in the state, on the state level that in the state of Ohio, where I was born, it's around $1 billion in savings that we generate to the, to the Ohio healthcare system every single year. Just one company, again, based out of Israel. And our footprint in the United States, here you could see our CEO meeting with the governor of New Jersey and our headquarters uh, right outside of, uh, right, outside of uh, right in Newark in uh, Parsippany, New Jersey. But we have manufacturing and supply chain all throughout the United States in Florida, Utah, Ohio, uh, down in Cincinnati, California, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Missouri, and Virginia. And we have R&D in Pennsylvania, Florida, and California as well. And we generate and support around 57,000 jobs throughout the United States. So we are a major investor both in the United States and in Europe. As I mentioned before, we are also leaders in innovation in our space, in the biopharma space. So we have two recent drugs that we invested in and brought through uh, approval of the FDA uh, to patients around the world that are, that are helping patients that suffer from migraine, where there are over 2, million, 2 billion patients that suffer from migraine throughout the world, as well as Astato, which is a, men, which, which is a medicine for Huntington's disease, and tardive dyskinesia, it's uh, for neurodegenerative diseases that uh, do not have a huge patient population and we were able to come with a therapy that helps them to improve their lives and this is something that we are continuously invested in and being situated and heritaged from israel 
has a unique advantage, competitive advantage, because as we all know, Israel is an innovation powerhouse and it has a unique strength in the biopharmaceutical and life sciences sector. And it's not a secret anymore. So all of our competitors that you see their logos here, all of our competitors in the life sciences space are all in Israel trying to tap in using several different models, some we partner with even, uh, trying to tap into uh, the life sciences ecosystem here in Israel to be able to come out with the next greatest medicine, vaccine, medical device, or digital health uh, technology. And Teva has greatly benefited from this. As you can see, two of our leading medicines, Copaxone for multiple sclerosis and Azelaic for Parkinson's disease, both came from Israel, from Israeli IP, um, which we were able to then commercialize and bring to patients throughout the world. So we are continuously integrated, as, as David mentioned before, and in strong dialogue with the Israeli innova innovation ecosystem to develop new talents, new technology, and also new science. So we work with all the universities and we just initiated 12 new collaborations throughout the last year at universities all throughout Israel, working to develop new, new areas of talents, tapping into the Arab Israeli community, working with students at all universities, and trying to help also to bring scientists back to Israel, that those that are working abroad and would like to come back to Israel, working with them to help strengthen the ecosystem in Israel, as well as a unique partnership that Teva forged around five years ago with uh, the Dutch-based company, Philips Healthcare, which is strong in digital health and medical devices. And we brought our pharma experience and together we formed a partnership of Sonara Ventures, uh, which is an incubation and a innovation platform based out of Israel, supported by the Israel Innovation Authority. And I'll share with you some of the companies that are dealing with COVID-based uh, developments at the moment. But that's it about Teva uh, and the fact base. And as I mentioned before, now during the COVID-19 public health crisis, probably the greatest public health crisis that any of us has ever witnessed, um, Teva has a unique role because as being the leading supplier of medicines, we have a responsibility to continue to provide uninterrupted supply of our medicines for 200 million patients that take a Teva medicine every single day. And those medicines are not just directly to treat COVID, they're also to treat emergency medicine and, um, and we have to make sure that our emergency rooms and ICU units have medicines that Teva is a leading provider of. So we are working with governments, including in Europe, uh, all throughout Europe on a, on a national level and also at the EU level to make sure um, that there is uninterrupted supply and our medicines can reach the hands of patients uh, uh, for those that need and we can support government efforts. And we are focused on, again, under, uninterrupted supply of medicines, helping to provide treatments that can be potentially supportive of COVID-19, including investigational, uh, 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 some investigational treatments, which I'll share with you in a bit. Uh, we are also very dedicated and focused on making sure that our over 40,000 employees throughout the world are safe and can continue to conduct their job and live their lives in a healthy manner. We have direct responsibility for them. So we have a strong workforce policy, which also supports our, our, our people's health, health, but also well-being. And, uh, and we are very much connected with regards to uh, some of the developments in Israel and abroad. Uh, regarding uh, some of our, um, some of Teva's actions in the US and in Europe as well, Teva has donated uh, some investigational drugs called hydroxychloroquine and others uh, to governments. Uh, these are some of uh, our PRs that we sent out in the US, but also in Europe. We made this medicine available at no charge for over 29 countries throughout the world. So really, Teva is, uh, is helping to make sure that, th that medicines that could have a potential benefit for patients uh, to treat COVID-19, we're working to donate them throughout the world. And we are also working tirelessly with a, with a very um, creative partnership between Israel, the US and India to help and, and with European uh, governments 
to help make sure that the that medicines in a global supply chain can reach their endpoint. Here you could see uh, after India uh, placed a, a ban on um, on hydroxychloroquine export from India throughout the world, Teva worked with governments in Europe and also with the United States government and the Israeli government. And here you can see an El Al plane, which we got on and took to Mumbai uh, to get um, to get an export of a uh, shipment export, which was approved with an exemption by the Indians uh, to help patients in the US. We also donated 2 million of these tablets in Israel. And we have also donated millions of ta uh, tens of thousands and millions of tablets of hydroxychloroquine and other medicines, again, throughout Europe uh, to governments that have requested of such. Here you can see a picture of uh, one of our factor, uh, one of our factory workers that is packaging these donations in Farsaba, which is a leading manufacturing site in Israel, which also exports uh, throughout the European Union. And as I mentioned before, we have policies put in place to help make sure and invest in our people's health and safety throughout this crisis. Uh, and we also implemented a policy that allows all of our people that need to take time off to continue to do so, not at, not at their own expense, but at the company expense, and can continue to uh, take time off to be with their families uh, at home as needed. Um, of course, we do have a responsibility towards our, uh, towards our communities. So we are working with leading uh, institutions in the US, Israel, and in, is uh, and in uh, Europe uh, to support them in their efforts, whether it be the Joint Distribution Committee, the Magen David Adom in Israel, Mount Sinai Hospital in the United States. And we are also, as you can see here, we just announced last week that we are donating 100,000 pots of Pseudogram, which is one of our brands, uh, to frontline NHS workers uh, in the UK. Uh, so we're trying to help the heroes that are really helping uh, our patients around the world and our people around the world. As I mentioned, we are also supporting innovation. So we have 31 clinical studies, which Teva is supporting with our medicines and know-how. And we are also the exclusive sponsor for the National Institute of Health in the United States, the NIH, into a study for the effectiveness and safety of hydroxychloroquine for the use of patients in COVID-19 to help that investigational support. And in the race for a cure around the world, you can see there are over 90 programs that are trying to develop vaccines. These are non-TEVA related, um, but there are over 90 programs in the world that are trying to develop either a vaccine or an antiviral treatment for COVID-19, where there's a need, again, there will always be companies that will do so. Developing a vaccine or a medicine is incredibly tiresome. It could take years, if not decades. Uh, most fail and do not succeed. Billions are invested in each one of these programs. The success rate out of 90, we're not sure how many, how quickly we'll get one or how many out of those 90 will actually succeed. What I think is promising is that you can see here on this slide, some of the best companies and the leading companies in the world in innovation are, are heavily invested alongside academia. So AstraZeneca working alongside scientists from Oxford drives a lot of promise into uh, what, can, what can be developed out of that. And if it's a Gilead team based out of based out of San Francisco that's developing an antiviral that's taking one of their antiviral medicines and trying to pivot to to treat COVID nineteen, which the news came out last week with remdesivir, um, it's very promising news, and they're going to go into more and more investigational um, trials to show the actual effectiveness. Uh, but at least that's promising news. Out of those ninety. Um, you know, it's good to see that the powerhouses, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, Gilead, Pfizer, and others are heavily invested in the race for a cure. And of course, where there's a need, you will always see Israeli companies and Israelis, especially in the life science uh, sector, trying to come up with solutions for global need. Here you could see uh, two different, uh, two different uh, um, programs which have caught a lot of news recently. One which is a vaccine, which is, which was originally uh, discovered um, from its from the treatment of animals up north outside of Kiryat Shmona, um, in a, in a research uh, innovation organization called Migal, 
which has been invested in by our crowd recently, and they're trying to develop that into a vaccine, as well as a treatment, which has also been a strategic partner in the, in, has a strategic partnership in Germany, which has recently had some success uh, treating patients in New Jersey. So you could see there again, the US, uh, Germany and Israel connection called Pluristem, which is an incredibly fascinating company, which does stem cell research, where again, they're not developing a uh, vaccine, but they do believe that their treatments and their methodology of treatments can actually help specific COVID patients recover quicklier. Um, so again, it's not going to be a cure for COVID, but it will be a treatment that can help, that can help pa patients uh, hopefully um, come out. And again, wherever there is a need, there are Israeli entrepreneurs and Israeli companies that will come out and try to meet that. I mentioned Sonara Ventures before, which is the venture platform which Teva and Philips Healthcare are both invested in, which some of you may have visited in the past. And like any Israeli entrepreneurs, we, we in our Sonara portfolio have several companies which have pivoted uh, towards the COVID space since the outbreak. One is doing financial navigation. TaylorMed is a, a fascinating company, which is AI and big data driven, which helps providers, hospitals, and patients navigate their healthcare journey, which their financial healthcare journey can be extremely burdensome, especially in the United States. So with the COVID-19 crisis, and they're pivoting to take their AI and big data capabilities to be able to help providers and patients navigate that financial burden immediately and working with all partners. Uh, here you could see an, uh, a great medical device called My Home Doc, which is currently closing its A round of uh, investments. And here it's, uh, it's a medical device which uses remote telehealth uh, technology to do nine different uh, primary care tests. And we are working now with two public hospitals to pivot to see how this device can also be used for COVID-19 uh, diagnostics in the remote primary care. One Cell is a biopharma startup, which is uh, dealing in personalized onco-immunology onco um, uh, space, mo mostly for the oncology space again, as a lot of different biopharma startups in Israel are in. And what they're doing since they deal in antibodies, what they did since the COVID-19 outbreak is basically to pivot again to the COVID-19 space and try to see how they can identify antibodies as quickly as possible to be able to neutralize the virus. Again, it's in very early stages, but the research that they're doing together with uh, some of the best scientists that Israel has to offer, uh, we have a lot of hope for. And last but not least is a diagnostics company, which is new to our Sonara Ventures platform. Uh, but here, Sherman Diagnostics, again, is using its technology to be able to detect pathogens, which are basically the way to detect, um, to detect um, uh, uh, viruses in the blood system and to do it in a rapid space to be able to have an answer within a minute. And I'm just going to end before taking any uh, questions. We have a value at Teva, which is quite unique, which is our work should have meaning and it should help make our families proud. So as a husband to Chagid and, uh, and the father of three children, uh, we've all been quarantined at home for the last two months, as many of you have been around the world. Uh, my wife likes to joke with me that I'm probably the only person during the last two months that was able to actually get on a plane and go abroad uh, throughout this time. Uh, but uh, we did so because, again, where there's a need, Israeli companies and a company like Teva will take very dedicated, focused accountability and just take action as quickly as possible. So we worked uh, to be able to get uh, medicines, again, to be the first company to get medicines out of India and to bring them to patients in need. Uh, taking an LL -L plane, here you see blue and white plane in the background supported by the Israeli government to pick up medicines in India and to bring them over to the United States. And we're doing the same type of operations also to bring medicines uh, to Europe, uh, to all, all throughout Europe. Uh, where there's a need, there's a, uh, where there's a need, we will find a way. Uh, and in the middle of card games with my children, when I have to answer the phone once in a while, uh, they always yell at me. But when I told them that Abba's working on trying to get patients uh, medicines that they need to treat coronavirus, there they were okay with it. And when I showed them a picture like this, that this is actually what I'm doing, 
that's how we make our families proud. Uh, so I'm proud to work at Teva. I'm proud to be in the Israeli uh, biopharma space and happy to answer any questions. I think should I look in the chat room maybe? Uh, uh, Mati, maybe uh, I'll begin while we uh, we receive uh, questions. Uh, um, uh, by the way, let me let me just comment, uh, uh, Mati. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. It was professional, personal, uh, moving, and a real tour de force. Uh, those of us at Elnet that were fortunate enough to visit some of these sites, whether Teva or uh, Sanara. Uh, and I invite all of you to do that uh, on your future trip, Israel. It's an incredible experience to see the real power of uh, the biotech sector and the innovation in Israel. But Mati, maybe you can say a word or two uh, a bit more about the importance of Europe uh, to the sector of the Israeli economy, both to Teva, and you mentioned Pluristem, an amazing uh, stem cell research company that has had a five-year strategic agreement with a research hospital in Berlin. Uh, I, Tell, tell us a little bit about the importance of the European market and funding opportunities like Horizon 2020 for companies in your yeah. sector and especially at Tepa. So I, I think that I would say that the EU alongside the US are, two, are our two main markets, the European markets uh, with the proximity of uh, Europe um, are really our, our probably our one of our, if not the most uh, strategic market that we have. And, and for our sector specifically, where we have to manufacture and supply medicines. So Teva looks at Europe as a very strategic investment. We made our first major investment into Europe uh, around 10 years ago, again, with the acquisition of Ratio Farm uh, out of Germany, which was the leading, uh, a leading generic provider of medicines uh, in Europe. And I could just share with you uh, now that we are in the process of building a factory in Germany, in Ulm, which will be Teva's first ever biologic manufacturing factory. Uh, so we are very much uh, tapped into learning from the industry capabilities that exist in Europe and to be able to then uh, leverage them for our biopharma space and, and to be able to do that for our company globally. Uh, you mentioned Horizon 2020. So again, Israel has a unique position. We are not a members of the EU, of course, but, uh, but we are able to take part in the innovation programs uh, at the EU level. And it's very important for a company like ours. We collaborate with all our peer companies and work on challenges together with them, even hosted a, uh, a meeting of that, of uh, the Horizon 2020, uh, one of the consortiums here in Israel back in January on a specific biopharma challenge that we have there that Teva's taking the lead in. Uh, so for our company to be able to access um, both the know-how that exists in Europe, but also the funding po uh, possibilities, whether it's through Horizon 2020 and others, is very much important for biopharma innovation. Uh, thank you, Mati. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question a little bit about uh, uh, on the political dimension. So sure. uh, Teva, unfortunately, is one of the companies that uh, uh, is now included in the UN quote unquote uh, so called blacklist of companies uh, operating either in Israel or with uh, Israel. And does this have any impact on uh, your operations or on the other companies' operations? And, and how are you dealing with that? So it does not have any impact on Teva, but it's something, of course, that we, like all other Israeli companies, uh, watch very closely. Okay, and how about the BDS movement? Um, uh, have they uh, looked at uh, Teva as a target in, in European markets or internationally? Is that something that has been of concern to the company? I would say the same answer, not in a material way, but it's something obviously that we, just like any other company, monitor very closely. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're gonna open the, the, the chat room here because I, I see we already have some questions and please add your questions because this topic is really all-encompassing. Uh, our first question is from Claude Grunman. Uh, Claude, do you want to ask your question? If you can be unmuted. Yeah, thank you very, very much. It was extremely inspiring, and it's good to be Israeli when we have Teva representative in front of us. 
So thank you very, very much. And thank you for letting you make that possible. I wanted to ask a question, which is uh, at both times, more general, your feeling about the global economy and what is, how much is going to impact Teva uh, as a company, international company, global company, and uh, what will be then your change of strategy in terms of new targets and uh, new partnerships maybe. So that's a little bit large, but try to, to make it possible. I think it's a, it's a very um, small question that you asked, right? Uh, but, um, but again, it's, uh, I think there's a lot more unknown still than there is known. Um, it, it will require um, a very thorough review not something I could speak on behalf of Teva with regards to how our strategy will change, but obviously it's something that every company will have to take a look at. I think every country is now taking a look at um, how to make sure that they have secure and stable supply chain um, to make sure that in a global supply chain world, how each country can ensure that they have uh, emergency stockpiles, capability to get medicines to their patients as needed. That's something that Teva is very interested in actively working in partnership with governments and lawmakers and policymakers throughout the world to be able to, because we understand that we are the leading provider of medicines by volume, full stop. So as that, we also have a responsibility to work with policymakers and we're happy to do that in that sense. Uh, we have a question um, from, uh, uh, I, I guess the name is Spitz, uh, if you can unmute. Uh, Brian Spitz, please. Thank you, Mati. Uh, brilliant presentation. It's very enlightening. Um, my question really is, is focusing on uh, with the issues that are coming uh, between China and the U.S. in terms of their relation and the large number of uh, pharmaceuticals that are coming out of China. Uh, does this open up uh, further opportunities for Teva and other uh, Israeli pharmaceutical companies uh, to increase that share? Uh, of production with U.S. and around the world, and what tangential effects will that have? Thank you. It's an excellent question. So, I would I'll split it into the current situation and going forward. So, currently, um, there it's been well published that the United States is relatively um, very reliant on medicines coming from China and API active pharmaceutical ingredients that originate from China. Uh, Teva specifically, as the leading provider of medicines in the United States, is uniquely positioned and not reliant um, on uh, manufacturing in China. Uh, our main manufacturing sites are in the United States, Canada, Europe, in many different countries throughout Europe, Israel, of course, and in India. Um, China, we have one small site which does active pharmaceutical ingredients, but it's a very small portion of our global network, which again is the largest in the industry. Uh, so we have not had a disruption uh, during this, uh, a major disruption during this public health crisis. Going forward, as you mentioned, I think that in the United States and of course in Europe as well, there will be a lot of uh, policy discussions. and. Um, and uh, regarding how they can uh, secure the supply chain and uh, going forward, I believe that, um, that those are discussions which are very valid, not specifically about China, but I do, think, um, I do think that those type of discussions and dialogues are very valid. And I believe in the United States, there's more and more voices that are calling for a stable supply of medicines that are reliant on manufacturing in the United States and in their allied nations, whether it be NATO nations in Europe or Israel uh, as a strong ally. So I think that there is a lot of opportunities, as you mentioned, and there will be a lot of focus on that uh, in the coming months and probably coming years as these things take time. Uh, okay, a question uh, uh, that we have uh, uh, as well for you, Mati. What, if you could talk a little bit about Israeli solutions on uh, the coronavirus, uh, we mentioned a little bit uh, the challenge of the vaccines, the uh, maybe a, a word or two about the uh, uh, antibody uh, medications, the uh, antiviral medications, and some of the manufacturing challenges that a country like uh, Israel would have really scale up. Uh, uh, do you see Teva playing a role in, in scaling up manufacturing on any of 
any of these future therapies that the world needs, and Israel certainly does. So I would say first and foremost, I think Israel has a unique capability to come up with initial ideas uh, in the laboratories and, in, um, and, and to, ide to ideate, basically, uh, to come up with the ideas. And that could be around IP for vaccinations, and it could be also for antiviral treatments, as well as for diagnostics uh, capabilities. Those are the areas where Israel is very strong in the early R&D stages. Um, and many companies are in Israel trying to get those ideas into their global network. Where Israel does not have a strength in, and that makes sense as a country of 9 million people, is we are not going to see manufacturing overnight being built at a capacity level for billions and billions of people. That's, that's something you would do in Europe or that's something you would do in the United States probably. And many companies would be doing that. So I think the collaboration cross-border between Israel, uh, Israeli ideation and European, uh, European and, R and, and, Unite, and American development and manufacturing uh, would be something that would be, uh, have more of a promise towards, um, have more promise towards uh, actually succeeding. Um, the vaccination uh, ideas that have come, that have been uh, under development in Israel are in very early stages in the academia right, right now, with the exception of the one, uh, Adam Migal, that I mentioned before up north, uh, again, which is being done from a small uh, from a small unit up in the north of Israel, uh, which could have some promise, but in order to be able to really scale it up, they would need to partner with global companies um, uh, to be able to do so in a fast manner. And I think there's enough of those all throughout Israel that would be willing to do that as it shows promises in, in the next development stages. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, our next question is, what, what more can Elnet and Teva do together in Europe? Uh, and specifically, uh, what can be done uh, to get Israeli companies uh, more helpful, uh, more, more involved in helping uh, Elnet uh, advocate for uh, Israeli uh, businesses and, and, and political positions uh, by supporting Elnet? So I think Israeli companies uh, can, def can and should definitely work with Elnet more, uh, both to help you um, tell stories that are coming out of Israel and to, and to highlight some of the great work that's coming out of Israel from Israeli companies um, and the unique partnership that Israel and Europe have. Uh, we can do so in hosting visits when it's okay to get back on, uh, to get back on, uh, to get back on a plane and travel. And we can do so also by sharing our stories locally. Uh, I know that uh, the Elnet team uh, in France has a very close relationship with the Teva France team. And we're happy to do that in every single one of our, the countries that we work in and, and also at a European level. Uh, and I think that um, Elnet has a critical role to play in uh, commercial innovation, cross-regional innovation and the commercial relationship. And Teva's willing to take any part in that. And I'm happy to also help facilitate that with other biopharma and life sciences companies all throughout Israel uh, to be able to help make sure that we, uh, that we work together on that. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Andy David, who is uh, our guest today from the Ministry of Hi, Foreign Andy. Affairs. Andy, go ahead. Nice shark. Oh, thank you. Shark tank. Um, there you go. So uh, a big, a big uh, challenge that I, I see when I meet a lot of companies here, uh, especially the ones who are developing technologies in, in the medical field and, and uh, um, what kind of treatments, is the need for databases, for uh, patients' data. And I think yeah. that if we could somehow promote or, or work together uh, with everyone this call to try and, and get as many of our databases, our patient databases to be shared, uh, that would be extremely helpful for a lot of the certainly uh, uh, artificial intelligence based treatments and, and technologies, but also to developers like Teva and others. Um, so this is something that I wanted to raise here. Yeah, I think uh, first of all, Andy, as a representative also of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, I have to thank uh, the ministry 
uh, for everything they've done throughout this crisis. I think it's an untold story, really in many circles. Uh, you see a lot of uh, media publications around what the Ministry of Health is doing, the heroes on the front lines uh, in our healthcare system, but also in the Ministry of Defense and Mossad and others. Not enough is being told about the embassies and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and their work in helping to ensure supply chain remains open and companies can and patients can receive uh, the equipment and the, and the medicines that they need. And really want to thank you because I've worked very closely with you guys for the last two months, uh, both here in Jerusalem and all throughout the world. Uh, regarding your question, so I think there's two issues really to deal with. One is regarding how do you find the balance between patient uh, privacy uh, of their data and, um, and, and as you mentioned, making it available also for R&D development. There's a lot of laws that go into that. I think there's a balance that needs to be struck. You don't want open uh, access to data uh, by companies like Teva and either, but you also want it to be able to enable access to that data in a controlled manner and a non-personalized manner. And that's something that Israel is actively working on. Regarding how do you synchronize that then with a broader uh, pat patient database, of course, the more data you have, the better off you are. Israel is uniquely positioned in the fact that we do have relatively broad um, uh, medical databases. Here it's well known uh, that we have medical databases uh, for, all of our for all of our people throughout Israel. Uh, one of the challenges is that they're owned by the HMOs, uh, by, the health, uh, by, the, by the sick funds, basically the providers in Israel. So we would need to have a national policy which then uh, enables the sharing of those databases uh, with uh, with our partners in Europe, and I think that's one area that that Israel and Europe should be working for. Because again, if you take our, our population of nine million people in Israel, we're probably a medium-sized European nation in that sense, not just such a small country anymore. So we have a lot to offer, and we can work with a lot of European countries in that manner. We have a question from Pascaline Wedgman uh, from uh, Elnet. Pascaline, please. Uh, hi, Marty. I have a question. I would like to know, have you heard about uh, this project, uh, Jordan Gateway, which is an area between Israel and Jordan that's being developed for industries from all over the world? Um, I want to ask if that would be a potential for um, building manufacturing side uh, and you spoke a lot about the, the markets in Europe and the US uh, how about uh, sales in the Arab world um, is this uh, how is the market is it, uh, is, it yeah. is it growing thanks so uh, regarding the specific project with uh, with uh, the gateway between Jordan and Israel it's not something I specifically know about I did uh, start my military career uh, serving on the Jordanian border for about a year, so working with the Jordanian army, and I, and, um, and I know that a lot of such civilian uh, projects are continuing to exist, sometimes below the radar a little bit, um, but anything that can generate um, economic prosperity between the two countries, I think would be a net positive. Uh, you'd have to see, of course, uh, what specific manufacturing sectors would benefit from uh, working in such a zone. Uh, I think Israel's lost a lot of manufacturing over to Jordan, where you have high capabilities at a lower cost. And, um, and I think that there are some areas where we could uh, mutually benefit. And uh, anything that would be good for the Jordanian economy would also benefit Israel as well. So there's, there's value in that type of, uh, there's value in that type of uh, collaboration. Uh, regarding Middle East economies, uh, we as a company have a policy of trying to make our medicines available commercially anywhere around the world that we're allowed to according to law. Uh, so there are certain law, uh, laws that prohibit Teva from selling medicines in countries which are designated as enemy countries according to Israeli law, which is Iran, Lebanon, and Syria. Uh, so there's, we do not, there, in those countries, we do not make our medicines available, neither um, by sale or donation directly, indirectly, in any type of manner. Uh, but any other, com any other country, we are willing to make our medicines available. And there the question is really whether the other side uh, wants a company uh, that's based out of Israel, whether it's by us or through one of our subsidiaries to be the provider of medicines for their people. I think that more and more so, 
uh, we are seeing uh, positive trends in that in that in that manner and more openness and uh, and we're trying to do that as much as we can.